Hey everyone, it is Caleb, welcome. In this video, we're gonna talk about something new to this channel, and that is webhooks. Now, webhooks are a part of a bigger study of real-time application development. So in English, basically, we want to improve communication between software and allow apps to talk to one another and do this in an automated way. So to illustrate what webhooks can do, I have this Discord server open, and this is just like a chat room if you've never used Discord. It's also similar to Slack, if you're familiar with Slack. And uh, it's a pretty small server, there's just me, but you can see I got this little crown here, so you know, I'm pretty popular on this server. Anyways, I have this terminal over here, and I want to type in a message such as, hello world. And when I hit enter, it pops up over here in this Discord channel. Yeah, channel, see, <laughs> I'm so unfamiliar with Discord, I had to think what this was called. So anyways, this is an example of what webhooks can do. So instead of a, a old school way of programming where this Discord channel would basically ask, hey, are there any new messages to display? And it would keep asking this over and over again. Well, it's going to flip this around and now our application over here is just going to notify Discord whenever there is a new message. So it's real time and it's automated. We don't have to do anything from this app to this app. Behind the scenes, what's happening is that this app is going to send the data to Discord and Discord is automatically going to process that data. So if you wanna see a little bit more of how this works behind the scenes, it's actually really simple. So here are my lines of code. And this is acting as the server in this situation. So we are doing something on our application and we're going to update the client, which in this case would be Discord. So Discord is waiting for some information and we're going to send that information to this URL right here. This is in Python and I pretty much have started studying this topic of webhooks as I've been developing my new Python course. So I just thought I'd throw that out there guys if you're interested in that, I'll leave a link for you guys in the description. So that's being built right now, but you can subscribe to your email and get any updates on that. But anyways, basically we are going to notify Discord of any messages that are given in this input. So when you look back to this, you know, it seems kind of cool. Like if you've never seen how a Discord bot works, you know, it's only like how many lines of code? Six lines of code. And we're able to basically jump in this Discord as a bot and type whatever we want over here. Now in this setup, our app we have over here is pretty useless. <laughs> However, you can imagine replacing this app here with something a little bit more complex. For example, GitHub, you can connect GitHub to Discord. And also, it doesn't always have to be going to Discord. You can connect these applications to different things as well. As long as you have two pieces, you can use web, I forgot what they were called. <laughs> as long as you have two important pieces, the server and the client, you can use webhooks. However, it's not always that easy because the server is not something you always have access to. So in this situation, we're lucky because we're filling that role of the server here. We are developing an app that's sending messages to the client that's listening, in this case, Discord. However, that is not always the case. And let me go ahead and show you what a traditional API call would look like where we're not using webhooks. So over here, we have a request to this web address. And how this is working is that this IP address points to some server out there on the internet, and this server is accepting requests. And specifically, we can request an account balance by passing in the account's address. Now, you don't have to worry about all of that. Basically, just focus on here that we are requesting information from this server. So we make that request with the URL, then we take a look at the response and we parse it to get the balance, and then we ultimately return that balance 
and this is a function we can invoke whenever we need to get an account balance. In this situation, we're acting as the client. The client here is requesting information from the server and the server gives us back that information. However, this is not a situation where webhooks can come in because this server actually does not support webhooks. It's the server's job to allow webhooks. The server is the one that's going to send information whenever they have a new update for the client to consume. So if the server is in a situation where they don't support webhooks, then you just have to use a regular API. So when I first started learning about webhooks, it was a little bit confusing, like what's the difference between a webhook and an API? And ultimately, the answer is who is the one doing the work here? If it's the client requesting information and the server returning it, then that's just a traditional API. If instead, the server initiates the action and sends data to the client, then that is a webhook. Now let's say that this server supported webhooks and it was able to broadcast any time an account balance was updated. In that situation, we would actually give this server a location to send the data so we could receive it. And this would be done through a URL to a web API. So similar to like what we had here, Discord is receiving information to this web address. And you're probably wondering like, what in the world is up with this URL here? Why does it look like a bunch of garbage spewed on the screen? Well, this is not something you're meant to share with everyone, because basically with this URL, you could go ahead and you could send any message you wanted into my Discord, which I don't want you to do. So the random string of characters makes it pretty much impossible to guess a URL and send data to it. But basically the rule of thumb here is if you're given a URL, such as something that looks like this, then you're the one who's gonna be sending data to that web address and they're acting as the client and they're gonna do something with that information. You may also hear of this as the payload URL. It's just another name for the destination of the push notifications. So this is where we are sending everything. Now in this situation, we're using a Python script as our server essentially to send information to this web address, but you could just the same use Postman and just make a post request to this URL. And then you just need to match the data with whatever format that the client is expecting. So to show you this, here is a similar setup in Postman. We pasted that URL there. We have it on raw JSON. And then there was one other thing for the headers. We have content type application JSON. And in the body, we have content, whatever we want it to be. We hit send. And hey, look at that. We got a message. So going back to our Discord, and you can see it shows up there. So you can do it in a Python script or whatever language, or you can just practice with calling the API through Postman. Now there's a few more use cases of webhooks I wanna share with you, including the app that got me interested in webhooks to begin with, which I've spent way too much time on, but I'll show you guys that in a minute. First, I wanted to show you another use of webhooks, and that is you can improve software development and deployment pipelines using webhooks. So in GitHub, you can set up webhooks, and we're still using Discord as the client here. And in this situation, we can make it so that any changes to our repository is immediately sent to our Discord channel, which can be a great way for developers to see what's going on with the source code. So this can be a great way if you wanna call out some specific things. So if you say, let me select individual events, there might be some of interest. So for example, code scanning alerts, uh, that might be like, you know, issues or security warnings or if there was a deployment, this might be a big one. If you want to go check, make sure everything's working good on the live server before you know millions of people see it. And there's a bunch of other ones on here that you can see. By default, it just gives the pushes. So anytime someone pushes code to the repository, it's going to send off an update to the payload URL. So now I wanna show you an app I've been working on that takes advantage of webhooks. So I'm gonna open up my local host app. Uh, it's still in development. Obviously the user interface is uh, pretty sexy. So basically 
my idea here was to build a system that would take payment in cryptocurrency to purchase a course. So basically what happens is it generates an address to receive cryptocurrency and you don't have to understand how all of this works to understand the webhooks part of this, but I'm gonna show you where this app stands right now. So every address in cryptocurrency is derived from a private key. So basically this is the private key associated with that address. And I'm working on the database aspect of this right now. So that way I could store all of the private keys and I could go access those funds later. As of now, the way it works is every time you hit this button, it's doing an API request. So it's not getting notified in any way. And that's where this get balance that I showed you earlier comes in. Every single time I hit that button, this is being invoked. And you can see that down here in this particular route of forward slash data. So it's printing out the private key, it's checking the balance and comparing it to the cost of the course. Now, if I open up my wallet, I can create a new account in here off of that private key. And I'm just going to call this YouTube. And what I wanna do is I want to send some coins to this wallet. So we're gonna say from some account to, and this is called YouTube, and the amount that it costs is 500 coins. So I hit send. And you can confirm now that this account has 500 coins. So we should be able to go back to our web page, hit this, and it says, congratulations, email for course enrollment. And this is where the web hooks come in. So I had to figure out how can I get this email and enroll them in a course, specifically with a course platform that does not have an API. So I'll show you this from my end. This is my course page, and we currently only have 14 people enrolled. So what I wanna do is I wanna go over here and enter a new email address. So I'll go ahead and put in my email address and submit, and as soon as that happens, yeah, I need to like update the UI, but it should put this person in the course, and now there's 15 people. When this person gets added to the customer list, they also get put in my emails, so everything's connected, and overall it works okay. Now the way this works is this course platform actually integrates with a tool known as Zapier, and Zapier supports webhooks. So here's a look of how I have this set up in Zapier. We catch a raw hook, and we enroll a customer in Podia. Then from Podia, I have it connected with my email system ConvertKit. However, I will add that Zapier is extremely versatile. So basically it is an automation software that does all of this connecting for you. So you can go in here and you can do a bunch of different junk in here. So I'm sure there's integrations with pretty much any software that you might need. So let's see if I can search in here and say Discord. Well, hey, I could have integrated with Discord through Zapier and a lot of people do that. So the benefit of Zapier is it kind of abstracts away the complex communication between applications. However, sometimes you'll need to trigger a Zapier directly from your app. And in that situation, you actually need to catch a hook. So you're going to act as the server from your app. Zapier is going to be the client, which means Zapier is going to give you a URL to send data to. So go ahead and take a look at this. Now I don't really wanna give out the address for my Zapier, so I'm not gonna expand any of these, but once you are done, you can go into the next step and you can actually parse that information. So customize enrollment, here's an example. We just have it as the raw body being the email address. So when I send information to this, I just keep it really simple. The only thing in there <laughs> is an email address. But you could also take a first name and a last name or whatever else. If I wanted to, I could go down here and then I could update something in Discord or I could send an email to myself by putting in something like Gmail. So, you know, I could send an email and, and so forth. So I'm not going to do a comprehensive tutorial on Zapier in this video but I did want to show it as an important component to my application. So I'll probably want to make a backend function to work with this Zap URL, because at the moment it's being sent to the client, which eh, is probably not the end of the world, but 
The problem with that is if these webhook URLs get sent to a client side language, JavaScript specifically, well, anybody can go and see those URLs and tinker with your applications. So you do not want to do that. It's a little bit more risky than an API because with these URL, you're basically tying in full access with the URL. This is different than an API, which might have some level of authentication. So you should basically consider these URLs to be the equivalent of a secret key for an API. It's something you just don't want to give out. Now there's one more thing I wanted to talk about, and that's the difference between webhooks and web sockets. So these are two very similar words, and they're about the same thing, which is real-time applications, but they are different. Webhooks are for backend to backend communication. Web sockets are for backend to frontend applications. And we've done a little bit of web sockets on this channel, but I'm gonna explain it here for you guys. So in this situation, we have a backend application, the backend of a website. This is where we take API calls, etc., and we are communicating to Zapier. It's a similar thing with my sick console application. This is acting as a backend communicating with another backend. This is different than my website here because everything here is front end JavaScript. So all the webhook stuff is happening behind the scenes on the back end. However, the front end code doesn't have anything to do with the webhooks. And this is where you might run into web sockets. The purpose of web sockets is to update a front end upon something happening on the back end. An example of where web sockets might come in is, you know, you send these coins and you're checking, oh, nothing's happening. Well, web sockets would allow the user interface to automatically update when the back end knows that the coins were received. I obviously didn't implement that in this situation. However, it's a really popular architecture and that's how you can have web pages update automatically, notifications pop up, etc. So web hooks allows different apps to communicate and it allows for automation. Web sockets allows for real time front end applications. So hopefully that was helpful. If you enjoyed the content, please be sure to subscribe and also check out my um, links and stuff. Yes. Okay, thank you. See you in the next one.